Thank you very much. Um, let me first express my uh, my sorrow for that building which is on fire just now in Paphos, for which uh, building I have strong memories since my uncle had a restaurant at the basement. Aristo Baraboli. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ, Σοφοκλή, για την πρόσκληση. Ευχαριστώ το Αμερικανικό Πανεπιστήμιο της Βυρητού για τη διάθεση της έωσας στον Δήμο Πάφου. Θα ήταν ευχής έργο να είχαμε περισσότερο κόσμο. Το θέμα είναι ένα θέμα ανεχνής. Θα μου επιτρέψετε να σηκωθώ να μιλήσω, διότι δεν μπορώ να κάθουμε. Ε, και να με συμπαθάτε για το δασκαλίστικο νύφος το οποίο θα έχω. So, the chemical composition of the atmosphere. At, the atmosphere is not a, is not a compound. It's a mixture of gases. In an migma na erio, the atmosphere, the yin, the atmosphere. Ke, uh, in almost atmosphere, what is the atmosphere? It's the uh, gaseous envelope which surrounds Earth and travels with the air with all its motions. The circular motion or the planetary motion around the uh, sun. The atmosphere is divided into several sectors according to the temperature characteristics, according to the physical or chemical characteristics, according even to the uh, ability of the atmosphere to transfer the uh, radio waves. The best known parts of the atmosphere is the lower part of the atmosphere, which is the heaviest one. It is the troposphere, a word from the ancient Greek literature. Tropos means keros, weather. Troposphera, the place in the atmosphere where the weather, where the weather takes place. Of course, the, uh, the layer above the troposphere is the stratosphere. And in between them, the tropopause, many Greek words. Uh, let's see uh, a division of the atmosphere according to its general characteristics, which is the temperature. We see that the lower part is the troposphere, 10 miles at the mean 12 to 13 kilometers sea level. The tropopause, where the temperature remains constant, the stratosphere, where the temperature increases, and the ionosphere, ionosphere. Remember the other day when we had that explosion over the sun? And that optical phenomenon which appeared also in Cyprus? That is the layer which corresponds to uh, that optical phenomenon, the very nice optical phenomenon which we have seen uh, earlier, uh, the latest last week, uh, I think from the 10th to the 11th of October. And let us see what is the depth of the atmosphere. The depth of the atmosphere is not more than 500, uh, 500 kilometers, 500 kilometers from sea level. And if we have Take into account the radius of the Earth, which is 6,200 kilometers, you can see how this less, this small portion of our planet Earth is essential for our climate. The atmosphere has a tremendous mass, hiterastia massa, and this is the reason it has a tremendous inertia, adrania. Η αδράνεια της ατμόσφαιρας μας είναι εξαιρετικά μεγάλη διότι η ατμόσφαιρα της Γης ζυγίζει πάρα πολύ. Έναν κυβικό μέτρο αέρα ζυγίζει περίπου έναν κιλό. Έτσι χοντρά χοντρά για να το αντιληφθούμε. Η ατμόσφαιρα της Γης, η Earth's atmosphere has a lot of things to do with the climate of the, of the, uh, of the Earth. Η αμόρφωνε and continues, exagolutina diamorphoni, the universal climate. Why? Because the atmosphere is the layer which receives the sun radiation 
and transport that radiation to the Earth. So it is the layer between the solid part of our planet and the, uh, the rest of our planetary system. Through the atmosphere, sorry, through the atmosphere, all the energy produced by the sun is transferred to the Earth. The lower part of the atmosphere, the tropopause, as we have said, is the place where all the weather and climate phenomena are taking place. The Earth's atmosphere has a composition, but it is not a chemical compound. It has a certain percentage of all its substances. And let us see. What is the evolution of the atmosphere? Any exelixi. Post sekin is any exelixi. Remember uh, some 10 years ago when the uh, the scientists at uh, CERN celebrated because they found the particle of the god, of god, the god particle. Remember that? Okay. And then, when the first atmosphere started to evolve, it was called the protosphere, and it was only hydrogen and helium as a sun. The sun is a part. Is a is a is a body consisting only from hydrogen and helium. After that, we have the secondary atmosphere, Procambria epochi, that era, which uh, uh, is related with the, uh, uh, the volcano uh, eruptions and the seas of air, no oxygen. That Atmosphere was constituted only from carbon dioxide, nitron, and uh, small portions of uh, uh, vapor uh, water and ammonia, such as, such as also um, uh, methanium. Oxygen, which is vital for the uh, evolution of the uh, of all the existing on the planet was only in very small concentrations. These, these elements helped the Earth to create the first uh, plants. Plants were reacting through photosynthesis and they were releasing as a result of photosynthesis, oxygen, which gradually evolved into uh, a great portion of the atmosphere. And the latest atmosphere, we have the oxygen, which was concentrated in large amounts in the atmosphere and gave the ability to uh, the evolution of the atmosphere as we know it today. And of course, as we know, uh, the, uh, the, the animal planet and the uh, planetary planet of the Earth. Now, what is the percentages of this, uh, the constants of the atmosphere today? We have to say that the atmosphere, today's atmosphere, it's a result of thousands and millions of years of biological uh, processes and geological processes. The main constituents of the atmosphere is 70% of nitrogen and oxygen, 21%. 78 plus 21 is 99%. The rest, 1% is a lot of other small uh, concentration elements which are vital for our planet, like argo or helio or the carbon dioxide and some else. The last 200 years, and especially during the 180 to 100 years, the human processes, all these human activities, by using the fossil fuel to create energy and the cutting of the plants or trees uh, 
are strongly related with the, deplete, with the uh, creation of carbon dioxide and many other gases, which are uh, related to what today is called uh, climate change. Let us see what the percentages are. Nitrogen, oxygen, argo, 0.93%. 0.04, the carbon dioxide. Water, up to 4%, depending the place and the time. Neon, helium, methanium, krypton, hydrogen, xeno. See how small the percentages are and how carbon dioxide is increasing due to the anthropogenic processes and, of course, uh, another vital uh, compound, the ozone, uh, is decreasing, is depleted mainly in a large area of the, over the southern hemisphere. These very small amounts, ozone and carbon dioxide, these small uh, uh, changes of their percentages are giving uh, the place uh, to create uh, consequences to our climate. So the atmosphere is a mixture of gases with certain percentages. The percentages or the concentration of carbon dioxide is increasing. It is found that it is increased uh, from the era of the industrial era huh? and the, uh, the deforestation and the very large cities, which are helping carbon dioxide to increase when we cut forests, then the lungs of the planet, which are uh, creating carbon dioxide to uh, glucose uh, uh, and releasing oxygen are not uh, uh, that strong. So we have creation of carbon dioxide as a result of the industrial uh, era and the deforestation. Of course, methane is increased due to, the, uh, uh, due to the fertilizers which are used. When we need much protection, protection, protection in plants, we fertilize them in order to give us more quickly uh, the, the products. This uh, ultra-fertilization results in the uh, increase of methanium. Of course, this ozone, which is a compound uh, consisting of three atoms of oxygen, is uh, very, is very, very, sorry. This ozone, which is a, uh, a compound of three different atoms of oxygen, is depleted over the southern hemisphere, and ozone as a chemical compound is very vital for life on Earth. If we observe uh, populations of the very high mountains like Andes or Himalaya, they suffer from skin cancer. Why? Ozone at that height is not that much. Then a polyndo ozone ekipsila. Ozone dikamni. When we have strong sun radiation, absorbs the ultraviolet radiation eh? and filters it. Ultraviolet ra radiation is uh, a radiation which is harmful for the skin. So in that respect, when we have a depletion of ozone, a depletion of ozone, over the southern hemisphere is like saying that a lot of ultraviolet radiation is getting from the sun into the earth. And the area which is depleted is multiple times the size of Australia, of the continent of Australia. So from the above, it is found, it is proved that an alteration of the chemical synthesis of the atmosphere is observed with uh, result which is resulting into the increase of carbon dioxide and the depletion of ozone, which are the main two factors related to climate change. See what was 
the uh, distribution of carbon dioxide from 1975. Carbon dioxide is essential. We have to have at the atmosphere not more than three, three, uh, five parts per million, 335 parts per million, because that portion enables Earth to maintain a constant temperature at 13.5 degrees C. If no carbon dioxide existed in the atmosphere, then during nighttime, the Earth would have temperatures of minus 10, minus 20 degrees. Nitrous oxide increases only, always. Huh? And this is the era where the industrial era started. Methane increase. And CFCs, we know about CFCs. If we go back to 1988, uh, uh, the, all these gases, propulsion gases and gases for climate uh, control and so on and so forth, we are depleting, we are uh, resulting into the depletion of ozone. They destroy ozone. And this is the reason now the, uh, those gases for climate units are more friendly to the environment. How, let's go more deep on how uh, the carbon dioxide related, is related to the climate. Carbon dioxide, as I said, is an essential element uh, constituent of the atmosphere. Why? Because it keeps its temperature up to 13.5 degrees C. Carbon dioxide is maintained all around Earth at the height of 5,000 feet almost. And this, uh, this carbon dioxide leaves freely the sun radiation to pass towards the Earth and increase the temperature of the Earth from 13.5 to 25 to 30 degrees C. But during nighttime, when the infrared radiation wants to leave Earth and keeps Earth cooler, it is captured by that uh, layer of uh, carbon dioxide. It is physics, the law of BIN, high, um, uh, uh, high energy radiation is transformed to lower energy radiation uh, with the wavelength. So with the increase of uh, the portion of the uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, this results into uh, the, uh, the, keep it, the, the, the atmosphere keeps more infrared radiation, which means that keeps it's warmer. Every other day is warmer than the previous day. So uh, with the increase of the infrared radiation in the atmosphere results uh, as a result from the increased amount of uh, carbon dioxide, results into the uh, uh, increase of the mean temperature of the atmosphere. And how ozone is related is like the depletion of ozone over the southern part of, uh, uh, on the southern hemisphere uh, at the area of uh, Tierra del Fuego, South Argentina, a large area um, multiple times that the continent of Australia is, uh, is, is an area which the ozone is depleted. And from that area, a lot of high energy sun radiation is getting into the atmosphere, resulting the atmosphere to be uh, uh, a microwave oven. This is an expression which I use. Why? Because it leaves that high energy radiation to get into the atmosphere. So with the depletion of the concentration of ozone, then we have uh, uh, the, the, uh, the atmosphere is working as a microwave oven and the increase of temperature continuously. Let us see what the climate was. The uh, universally, the uh, the climate is measured, uh, is standardized uh, from the period 1961-1990, where the mean planetary temperature was 13.5. At present, 60 years after, 40 years after, huh? 50 years after, 
14.5 degrees C, which means one degree uh, Celsius, at least above the climate temperature of uh, the era 1961-1990. We have now 14.5, it was 13.5. Uh, in how many years? 70 years? Imagine that body of the atmosphere weighing billions of tons to gain a one degree uh, of temperature uh, increase. It is also said that 2023, uh, the universal mean temperature was 14.98 only in 2023. Was the highest ever recorded since 1850, where we have the first uh, uh, measurements. And according to geological uh, data, this temperature was the highest mean temperature of the recent 100,000 years. So temperature is, is on a rise. Until today, 15 consecutive months. So if we go 15 months before today, the mean planetary temperature was recorded as a record. So it seems that 2024 will close as uh, a year, even warmer than the warmest year, which was 2023. Graphics. Why graphics? Because a lot of words are given through a graphic. These gray uh, lines and the, are the temperatures before 1940. Much lower temperature than 2023, the red line. The red line. And look how the uh, 2024, the black line started much higher temperatures. And let us see what is Europe uh, looking today. If we see the temperatures from the era of the first uh, recording of temperatures, uh, these upside downs from, 19, from 1850 till our days, steady, 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 but from 1960 on the rise. And another graphic having the same meaning. These are records from uh, the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization. And what is the mean temperature over uh, our area? The M area, East Mediterranean, Middle East. Anatolic, Mesoyos, Messi, Anatoly. Look, 1960, 1980, 2000. 2019. The yellow line is our neighborhood. The black line is the global one, the planetary mean temperature, which means that our temperature is rising more with higher speeds than the global one. And if we see uh, the area of, uh, if we compare with Europe, United States, Africa, Australia, and other areas, we see that M area is much higher. And how about the mean uh, precipitation? Precipitation is a, is, a, is, a, is a commodity. Water is a commodity. Somebody said that the next war is going to be for water. Water is commodity. The mean uh, uh, annual precipitation over the over Europe, see Cyprus, yellowish. See the color, yellowish. Huh? So we expect that the future will be more drier than the present over the area of uh, this Mediterranean. And how about the glaciers? You know that the Alps is a famous destination for a lot of Cypriots, Sophocles, if you don't uh, know it. They go for skiing. A lot of Cypriots, they go for skiing in Swiss, over the Alps. 
they are facing a severe problem. They don't have snow during summertime, and they need to cover the, slow, uh, the, the snow areas for the snow not to melt. They are losing money from people who would like to go and snow during summertime. And look what the graphic says over the Alps, the blue line. Look, the accumulated snow decreases, 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 and the areas now are much lower, 30%, this is the scale, if compared to 1960. The global ones, the dotted lines, this blue dotted line shows that the result, climate change, uh, is, is a problem for worldwide glaciers. And the, uh, how about mean sea level? All that water from the melting of the uh, ice shield of uh, Earth is going to go to the lower places. What is the lower place on Earth? It is the sea. So if we see this scale here, and if we see our area, the color corresponds to that area there. So millimeters per year, the rise of mean sea level. We are going to face 35, 3.5 to 4.5 millimeters sea rise due to the melt of the ice caps. There are areas who are going to have problems. Larnaca is at sea level. Limassol is at sea level. If we take into account the blowing wind from the sea breezes, means that a lot of infrastructure will be not useful. Huh? So we have the main airport of Cyprus, Atlanaga, is at sea level, 0.7 meters, 70 centimeters above sea level. When you travel on the runway, you see next and right, right and left, you see the salt lakes. So we are at sea level. What is going to happen in 20, 30 years? And to be abandoned. Let us see over the area of uh, Mediterranean. These areas are areas which are going to be under the level of the water, not above, under the level of the water. The rise of mean sea level by 0 0.7 meters until the end of the present century, according to the intergovernment uh, panel of climate change. It is going to affect us. We are now talking about climate refugees. Are we going to have climate refugees in Cyprus? And Ios Neophytos is going to be an area which everybody would like to go and live because it's higher above sea level. And how about Sahara? The Sahara Desert is increasing towards the north. It's evolving towards the north. Cyprus, right? some parts of uh, the Ionian uh, coastline of uh, Asia Minor, some parts of the Iberia, some parts of Barcelona. So. The people who have gone to Barcelona, they have gone. Next time, it's going to be desert until the end of this century. The, uh, uh, the increase of the desert zone of North Africa towards the north, not towards the south that much, but towards the north. See, 21st century, the end of 21st century. The scenario is not good. Because with the increase of fossil fuel uh, and the production of energy, with the increase of deforestation, 
we have even more uh, increase of carbon dioxide. We have more absorption of the infrared radiation, increase of the mean temperature, and phenomena like typhoons or hurricanes or many days uh, duration uh, without precipitation and with high temperatures and floods. How is the future forecasted to be? If not yesterday, not tomorrow, yesterday, planetary actions are not taken, the future of the planet is not good and the suffer will be to humanity. The planet will survive. The planet survived a lot of climate change during the geological ages, but the constituents of the planet have been destroyed. Huh? The dinosaurus era, huh? Jurassic Park, they, they are not existing anymore. Um, Unfortunately, and unluckily, the climate change and the resulted crisis is we react to this crisis as being a political economical problem, having only to do with the planetary development. It is a matter of life of humanity. The targets which uh, European Union is, uh, uh, is setting for not relation of uh, the production of energy from the uh, fossil uh, sources are moved to the future. They are not taken into account now. Uh, let's do it on the 25, Let, let's do it 26, 27. We have also to say that it must be said and mentioned that for a portion of the population of the planet, uh, the climate change is not true. Sinomosiology. Eh? What do we have to do? There are no prescriptions which can be taken from the shelf, off the shelf, easily implemented. The sure is that if the human inertia persists, then we have catastrophe of the planet. The planet will survive. The humans are not going to. Or it will be a, a very difficult for humanity. That should be uh, set foundation for the change of the ecumenical model of development. Development must be faced totally different. And I say that ecology, not politically speaking, ecologia, do I need this? If I don't need this, don't buy it. Do I need a new shirt? If I don't need it, don't buy it. Or if I don't want it, give it to somebody else. The ecology is a great science which has to do with everything on our planet. Of course, uh, the renewables, the cycle economy, uh, the environmental conscience, uh, the self-conscious, the synesthesy, the synesthesy. What's the energy I get out of this thing? Me, Photo, photo, microphone, climatismos. What's the energy I get out of this thing? Me, the paraphernalia. But when I go to the airport, we go and buy a ticket from an airline eh, to go to Athens and set so many carbon dioxide, so much carbon dioxide is released in the atmosphere. Notice that only. Can we use our legs for walking? Can we use our mind and not always the telephone? Can we uh, 
μπορούμε να απεξαρτητοποιηθούμε από διάφορα πράγματα στο τέλος της ημέρας. Uh, this brought my uh, presentation to an end. I'm giving some uh, highlights on, uh, in English. Um, I have said uh, all, all the, all the uh, highlighted things, all the highlighted uh, senses have been uh, uh, given to the English language. But nevertheless, some, uh, a summary in English. Uh, we have to worry about our planet. And if we start doing something today on a planetary level, we are not going to find uh, a good path. We are going to find a good path after 50 years, the best scenario, after 80 or more years, the worst scenario. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and uh, being a family, we have to take care of each other. Thank you very much.